Today I would like to address what is arguably the biggest issue with competitive Pokemon by far. Recently I made a video about what I deem to be competitive Pokemon's biggest problem because the topic discussed in that video is something that affects the metagame and its players whereas the topic today is something that is just more of a nuisance hence why I call it an issue. The issue I'm referring to is competitive Pokemon's accessibility issue. The definition of accessibility is the fact of being able to be reached or obtained easily. AKA ease of access. In competitive Pokemon you could see this as how easy it is to get into and learn competitive Pokemon. The answer to this question is very easy or difficult depending on how you play competitive Pokemon. If you play VGC and Battle Stadium singles in the mainline games, they would probably say it can be quite time consuming and therefore quite difficult. But if you play singles or doubles on Pokemon Showdown, you will probably say that it's easy as it is very accessible. However, the official competitive format is VGC after all, which is of course the doubles format in the mainline games itself, and getting into this format is not quite as easy. If you want to play VGC, you can't just start up your game, pick a team and get into a doubles match, which is the case in a lot of other competitive games even if it's a more casual match. For example, shooter games, you can almost immediately jump straight into a match and can play in the competitive format after some time. In fighting games, you can get into a casual competitive match pretty much right away. In Pokemon, you have to first go through a single player campaign before you get access to the competitive format and all the Pokemon in the game. You can play competitive before finishing the campaign, but you will be at a severe disadvantage. From what I found, the fastest time someone was able to complete the campaign, including the Area Zero post game, is about 5.5 hours. And it's very likely that most competitive players, including you if you are a competitive player, are not a speedrunner. So let's assume that it takes an hour more, so 6.5 hours to complete the campaign by just getting through it as fast as possible, not doing any side quests, getting items, exploring or anything. After those six and a half hours, you also have to spend time assembling your team, which can be quite time consuming. Catching and finding the Pokemon you want is not that difficult, but getting the perfect competitive Pokemon is. It can take you a couple hours per Pokemon to grind out their EVs and get enough Terror Shards to change their Terror type. Not to mention you would need Bottle Caps to max out their IVs as well. You might also need to grind more materials to craft certain TMs, and there is a chance you would need to transfer act moves from other Pokemon. The thing is you can also not lower the IVs of your Pokemon manually, which is very annoying because certain Pokemon like Fluttermane and Ursaluna would prefer zero IVs in attack and speed respectively. This means the only way to get these Pokemon with zero IVs is to get lucky, and it can take a lot of time too. From what I've seen online, getting a team ready can take tens of hours to do, which is absolutely insane. And this is just one team, mind you. If you later decide to switch a team member or change the sets on the current team, then you are spending additional time. Compare this to Pokemon Showdown, where it takes about 2 minutes to get your team ready and start playing. This huge time commitment is the biggest complaint I have seen about competitive Pokemon regarding the accessibility. Because not only keeps it players from playing the format itself, it also takes away time you could have spent on creating a strategy for your team and potentially scouting other players teams. As a result, many VGC players will often use another method to get these Pokemon faster and this method is referred to as genning and might be something you are already familiar with and it has been the topic of the recent VGC controversy that happened at the latest tournament. Before we get into that controversy, let me explain what genning actually is. Genning is using third party software to generate a Pokemon for you that ticks all your boxes and you can transfer this Pokemon to your game. This only takes a couple of minutes instead of hours. Kind of the same as if you were able to create a Pokemon in Pokemon Showdown and send it over to your game. And it's basically an unspoken rule that the majority of high level players use this method instead of obtaining the Pokemon legitimate and it's kind of accepted as well. There's no skill involved in grinding out for Terror Shards or resetting your game for 20 times for the perfect IV Pokemon. So as long as your generated Pokemon is legitimate obtainable in the game, most people will not have a problem with it. Genning is however technically considered cheating because the Pokemon is not legitimately obtained, but these rules are usually not enforced in tournaments 
so players were able to get away with it pretty much every time. However, in the latest tournament, these rules got more enforced and as a result, some players got disqualified for Jenning. Now, whether you agree or disagree with Jenning being cheating and the Pokemon company disqualifying these players is another topic, but now you have some context. There are two main reasons that players use Jenning. The first is to save time, as we just mentioned, and the second is to obtain Pokemon they otherwise would not be able to. This also brings up another very big issue with accessibility, and this is that Pokemon is technically pay to win. Quite some Pokemon are actually not obtainable in the games itself. If you want to have every Pokemon in the Pokedex, like the Paradox Pokemon from the other games and the cover legendaries, you would either need to trade with other people or buy both versions of Scarlet and Violet for example, which will cost you an additional 60 euros for a game you will barely play. That is not all, because with Pokemon Home, more Pokemon from past games have been made available. However, these Pokemon are unobtainable in the games itself and only through past games. So if you want to use Ursaluna and Urshifu for example and other Pokemon from these games, you would also need to buy these past games. Imagine you are a new player entering competitive Pokemon in Generation 9 and only have Pokemon Scarlet. That means you would need to buy Pokemon Violet, Pokemon Sword and Shield plus the DLC and Pokemon Legends Arceus to get all the best Pokemon. These games will cost you 60 euros a piece at full price and the DLC will cost you 30 euros. In total this will cost you about 270 euros just to get all the Pokemon you might need or want to use. This is not including the price for the original version of Pokemon Scarlet you already bought. Not to mention that you also need to play through all these games for some hours to get these Pokemon which will take you more time and you do need to pay 3 extra euros as well for Pokemon Home to send them over. This is problematic because right now in VGC, Urshifu Rapid Strike is considered to be the strongest Pokemon. Other obtainable Pokemon like Lander's T, Cresselia and Ursaluna are also quite good. So as a new player you would need to spend an additional 270 euros and spend about 20 hours if you want a shot at competing with other players. If you don't, you will be at a disadvantage. Let me just remind you again that making Team Pokemon Showdown takes about 5 minutes and is free and you can battle right away. And in a fighting game you can almost immediately load into a game and be on the same page and only skill will make a difference in those cases. Not wasting your time doing other shit and paying money. This is why many VGC players playtest a potential team they want to use on Pokemon Showdown and not in the games itself. Imagine spending all this time on creating a team and finding out it's not actually that good. Now I am aware that in Pokemon Sword and Shield and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, they made some quality of life changes to make obtaining competitive Pokemon more easier and taking less time, but it's still a very big time commitment. The huge time and potential money commitment that you need for competitive Pokemon just to be able to play and even the playing field with your competitors is what makes actually playing the game very difficult and this is why accessibility in competitive Pokemon is a very big issue. An easy fix to this issue would be to make it significantly easier to obtain competitive Pokemon in the game and actually make every Pokemon that is allowed in VGC available to be caught in the games itself. I don't see this ever happening though because the Pokemon company likes money inspired you to build a second crusty crab right next door to the original money and implementing this would cost money and also takes away from their version exclusive games and the extra money they make on people buying both versions as a result i do think that competitive players will still continue to use channing as it does even the playing field and does not take that much time which is not really healthy if you ask me. Banning Jenning will only make this worse in my opinion because players that have enough resources could just pay others to grind out teams for them while the players that don't have those resources would have to spend their own time to do so and that takes away from stuff like planning a strategy. Do you agree with the takes covered in this video? Let me know your thoughts about competitive Pokemon accessibility issue and in the comments below. And check out my video on competitive Pokemon's biggest problem. Thank you for watching and see you next time.